Hello YouTubers and welcome to a new video of Arepas for Dinner. So for the ones who don't know me, my name is Andrea and I live in the Czech Republic in Prague and I make videos about my life. But if you've seen my recently video, my most recent video, you know I'm not living, living in Prague anymore. I moved a little bit away and I think you can hear a dog barking. I'm so sorry. I don't have my studio yet prepared and I cannot find any of my gear, not even the tripod. So I know it's in the house, I just don't know where. So I'm going to be recording with this super overblown background and I'm so sorry for that. But enough about this very awkward intro and let's start with the video. So this video is actually about a topic that might cause a little bit of trouble. So yeah, you can go fight in the comments, just keep it nice, keep it polite, you know, don't just kill me or kill each other. Just, you know, you can voice your opinion without offending or being offensive. This is an America versus Europe video. More specifically, America versus Czech Republic. The thing is that I'm obviously not American. I have an accent, of course. I live in the United States for like three and a half years. And actually every summer of my life, I spent it there. My family used to travel there a lot. I have uh, some American family and two of my uncles actually live there and I have American cousins and everything. In the European side, well, I live in the Czech Republic. I married a Czech man. I've been living here for two and a half years already. I have a very good grasp about what both cultures are about. As well, before that, I went to college both in America and in Europe. I went to college in Spain, in Valencia, and I went, did my master's degrees in Full Sail University in Florida. This video is about comparing, I'm gonna look at it a bit here because those are my notes, comparing um, the two societies. So the American society and the European society that we can call it the comfort society and the welfare society. So first of all, let's start comparing, but what are the goals of your, you know, average person in each of, you know, like the Czech society and the American society. So in the Czech society, I believe, or in the European society in general, the goal is kind of have a nine, you know, nine to six job, get paid monthly, live in your middle size apartment, maybe get married that in Czech Republic in the rest of Europe, not that much. Um, have one or two kids, you know, save the entire year to go to a very nice trip somewhere with that money. You know, just kind of live your life more for enjoying the now. As well, trusting the government that he or them are gonna provide for your future and your retirement because you pay certain taxes towards that. In America, the goal is a little bit different. The goal is not actually work to a nine to five job. The goal is to have your own business, is to have your own home, not apartment, your own home, and is to own things. I'm not saying that either of these goals is right or wrong. I'm just saying that they're different goals. Well, the American dream is not to travel five or four weeks a year. That's not the American dream. The American dream is to own the house and own the business. And that's pretty different and differs a lot from the European dream. And I'm talking about very general aspects because remember as well that America is almost as big as a continent and they have very big cities as well as they have countryside. And you know, Europe, Europe is the same. You have people that have completely like, Americanized goals in life and you have Americans that have completely Europeanized goals in life. The second thing we're gonna talk about now is work. How Europeans work and how American works is very different. Of course, you have people that work the other way around and say like, oh, I'm European, but I work like that. Yeah, for sure. But I mean, this is the general rule. So in the European side, you have that. Everybody wants to work for a bigger company kind of thing, have a fixed salary, have like a long time contract and pretty much just care about their job for eight or nine hours a day, depending on the amount of time, whatever. Americans, they might start like that, but their final goal is to have their own business. So even when you have like a civil engineer, they might start working for a company because they eventually want to build their own company and become a civil engineering company. The same with lawyers, you know, they work in a law firm because they want potentially to become a partner of that law firm. So the amount of hours that maybe each of these individuals work are different meaning the european want they don't want to work more than the eight or nine hours sometimes they have to but they don't want to because it doesn't generate more income why would you work 12 hours a day if you're going to be making the same or you're going to be making 20 percent more that is literally enough for like one extra grocery shop a, a month it, it makes no sense so the american one 
they might work more. They might be working in a normal firm and then take work home and then try to work in their own business. And at the end, they're working 15, 16 hours a day like a workaholic. But the thing is that in America, the more you work, the more money you make. If you work a Sunday, I'm actually going to pay you 250 euros. I say, wow, yeah, okay, I want to do that. And that's what's happening in US versus Europe with work dynamics. Number three, lifestyle. So the lifestyle of Europeans and Americans is completely different. And as I said before, it depends on what you like. It's not like one is better than the other. It's just that they're very different. So the European lifestyle is much more social. So you have much more social life. People live in much more concentrated cities and they live a more less individual life and more like communal life. Meaning they go to coffee shops, they go to parks, they go, you know, they always meet in common areas and they have this life kind of outside the house. The American, average American lifestyle is quite different. It's actually much more individualist. I mean, you see it even from the way people move around the city and around the country. It's like in Europe, people move with public transportation and in America, they move with cars. And it's just because America works much more as an individualist society. People want to have bigger houses with bigger gardens so they can bring their friends there and entertain. They would much rather live in a community where they can have a big house than in a community where they're going to have a small apartment and a big park. Yes, you have New York and you have Chicago and you have many cities that work more or less like Europe, but your average American is actually going to want the backyard kind of life. Now, what makes people happy? I talk about that a little bit at the beginning, that in Europe, I believe and I've seen that what makes people happy is actually those four or five weeks vacation people get a year and traveling. That's what they do. That's what has become. I don't know what, what it was like 15 years ago, but I know how it's like. And that's what your average European aims for. And that's like, that's what people live for. They're like, I live in a smaller apartment so I can pay less rent so I can have more money to make a very cool trip at the end of the year. Americans, on the other hand, they see trips as something, it's kind of rare. You have to be kind of rich to do trips because they much rather live a more daily basis life of what they want. What I mean is like in America, Americans can like be very happy with a bigger house, with a bigger car, with um, a new kitchen gadget, with like all these like small things with like decorating the house for fall, for example, doing like activity, like scuba diving or that they do diving or that they do like, uh, they have planes and they fly the planes. And that's pretty much what makes them happy, the day to day. So they don't really like save money for that super trip at the end of the year. It doesn't really exist. So the way both societies live is very different. The America lives much more in the now, in the present. Like uh, I work towards this goal that is coming next week or like the Disney trip that I have next weekend or like, you know, the crockpot that I want to buy. And the Europeans more like save money towards that final goal of maybe a trip or maybe something like that. That's in my opinion. You might say I'm completely wrong, but that's what I observe in both societies. How to get some of each. And this one is very important because I guess a lot of people down there in the comments are going to tell me that they have a little bit of both. And yeah, it's possible to get a little bit of each and it's doable, but you might be judged in both societies. Meaning if you move to US and you want to live in a city and you want to live in this small apartment and you want to have the type of like life that people would live in Prague, going to coffee shops and everything, and it might get very expensive. Then in Europe, when you want to have a little bit of the American lifestyle, you're going to encounter the same. You want to drive cars instead of public transportation. You want to live in a bigger house. So you might have to move like outside of the city and you won't encounter as many people doing what like Americans do in Europe. So you might find out that many of the things that you want to do or find normal, like doing a barbecue at home, might become kind of like a weird thing for others. That that's just my opinion. Now, a huge difference in between US and Europe. And now I'm going to speak specifically about the Czech Republic because I think the Czech Republic has a very specific thing with this, that is the doctor and health situation. So, I'm going to say that I dislike both. <laughs> in both places, I don't find that the system works well. And I'm not saying in the entire era because I know, for example, in Spain, the doctor situation works very fine. I was really pleased with it. I'm not pleased how it works here. I'm going to explain. In US, you have the issue with insurance. 
what's the craziness with insurance? Why health is not free? Because people say like the government should provide health because that's like basic. But if you think about that, then, you know, the government should provide housing as well for everyone and food for everyone because, well, that's necessary to live. And then we're already falling into communism there. So, I mean, they just do it differently. I do not think whatsoever their system works great, but I do think it's just a way of doing things. The thing in US is that insurances are very expensive. People say that insurance is linked to your work, but to be honest, not really. You can just go and just buy an insurance and pay it monthly. When I was living in the US, I was paying an insurance. It was was around like $120 a month. I'm gonna put the conversion here in check rounds. And that insurance covered pretty much absolutely everything. I just had like a $50 that I had to pay every time I would go to the doctor, or $80, I believe, um, for anything, but they would cover me all the way until $2 million. So that was good. The issue with the insurance in the US is that once you get sick, your primes and your like, what you have to pay for the insurance might increase. And the older you get, the more it increases and it becomes this like vicious cycle of nonsense. In the other hand, one, why people say like why insurances are so expensive and the truth is um, because hospitals charge a lot. And why do hospitals charge a lot? Well, first they want to pay the best. That's number one. And number two is that, you know, I've seen it in Better Call Saul, that TV show, that they said that United States is the home of the free and the lawsuit. Pretty much everybody sues everybody for absolutely everything. So in the US, when you go to a doctor and there's a malpractice and malpractices happen all the time and i've seen so many people go go through malpractices here in the czech republic and nothing is done but we're not going to talk about that we're going to talk about us right now so for example you get an operation and then you get a weird infection and it happened that like some bacteria went there because they didn't clean enough something in the room or somebody entered with shoes i don't know whatever you can sue the hospital and you can like go to a lawsuit there for like half a million dollars and win. My practice happens all the time, so the doctors just cover themselves with this. I am okay with that, no, but also take in consideration that when we say that insurances in US are $400 a month for like a person, that's like, that's insane. But think that also the average salary, salary is like 3,500. So it's not that outrageous after all. Now we move to Czech Republic, okay? Now here you have the social insurance that you have to pay, yes or yes, and you don't have the, chance of having a private insurance. I know a lot of people are going to tell me this EU premium and Canadian, whatever. That's not insurances. Those are clinics that offer memberships. Those are not insurance. And insurance works in many different clinics, not just like in one clinic. So in Czech Republic, for example, you do not have a real private health system. And people might say, but what's the problem with that? We love our free. Okay. It's great, but the thing is that when you want to go give birth in a hospital in the Czech Republic, there's no individual rooms. And you cannot find a private clinic where you can birth your kid on your conditions in a new hospital with very good, well-paid doctors. Doctors are all underpaid here. So pretty much in the Czech Republic, doctors stay just because they love their country, pretty much because there's no economical reason for them to stay. And I cannot you know, translate this to the entire era because I know, for example, in Spain that you have private and public. I just don't like how it works here because you don't have the choice. You don't have the choice to say, I don't like how you're treating my disease, so I'm going to go to the private clinic. There's no private hospital. There's no, I don't like the treatment that you're introducing towards my cancer, so I'm going to move to it. It doesn't exist. And I don't like that. And I know why you guys don't have that. I know it's like during communist times, there was nothing private, of course, but I just think that after 30 years, I mean, you see in Poland and they do have like private clinics that you just buy insurance and you can uh, go to those clinics. So I'm just talking a little bit about health. I don't think in either place is ideal. And I mentioned this a little bit before as well. So in America and in Europe, the traveling is very different. First of all, people laugh at Americans that they haven't been outside of America. Guys, America is the same size as Europe if you exclude Russia. So traveling inside of US can be a lot. And I know majority of Europeans haven't even left Europe. So it's pretty much the same situation. So a lot of Americans don't even have a passport because they haven't left US because it's just so big. So they just travel inside the country. And in US it's much more common to do just weekend trips because you don't get much vacations from work. 
literally almost none. I think you get like two weeks a year and a lot of people don't even take that vacation because it's not, it's just not in their culture. And they just like camp or they can do like a weekend to the beach or something small like that. Disney, Disney is a huge destination. New York for the weekend or like three days in New York, that's a huge thing as well. European, well, way of traveling is quite different. You actually have people traveling four and five weeks a year all together or divided. If we are in the Czech Republic, we can actually say that it's divided into two trips, probably the summer trip and the ski trip. The thing is, which one is better, which one is worse? It doesn't matter. It depends on what you like. To be honest, Czech people in Czech Republic or people in Prague especially, they live in very small flats. So it's much more common that they have the need to like get away on the weekends because you don't have a garden and you don't have a space to be. So people travel more. The job situation. In US, especially now during the Corona crisis, you saw how many people lost their jobs and a lot of people panicked about it. And that's because you have so much like freedom of business that hiring or firing somebody is quite easy. That has a bright side and a not bright side. Like I like that, but I understand people might don't like that and will never like that. And it's fine as well because you don't have job security, but at the same time, if I put a company, if I put a company and I have to hire somebody and I have to give them two month notice if I want to fire them just because the business is not blooming right now or something, I would be scared. I would literally hire just one person instead of the two or three that I need just because I would be scared of something happening and having to fire those people. In US it's much more like we have job right now and you go and you hire a bunch of people and three weeks later, I don't know, your restaurant got shot and it's not going to work or you know, you have half the clients or whatever and you just dismiss half of the people and it's fine. So the fluctuation is very high. It's very easy to find a job. It's very easy to lose a job. Then as well, in US, it's much more common for people to be able to live off their dreams because of how easy it is to make your own company. I believe that it's much harder to break from the big corporation type of work. So if you become a plumber by yourself or you become an engineer by yourself trying to do remodelations or whatever, it becomes very hard for you to get gigs and to actually start your work and I literally been in both sides and I literally been making money in both sides and I can tell you that's 100% true and I also now want to talk like the last step kind of um, the retirement situation because in Europe you have so many like uh, public things that you pay for like retirement like doctor like you they take a huge chunk out of your taxes. You have a huge VAT here in the Czech Republic. It's like 20%, 21%. In US, in Florida was, I think, 6%. So that's a huge difference. So you have all these, you know, money being taken away from you because the government wants to provide for you in the future when you're old. So you don't have to worry about that. In US, it works a little bit different. Yes, you do pay a little bit towards that, a little bit towards retirement. That's settled. Um, it's called social security, you have to pay it. It's like your money is yours and you should be able to do whatever you want with it kind of thing. What that means is that there's many retirement funds, for example. You can decide not to invest in any and just put your money in the bank or just eat your money and you decide to be a homeless when you're old or make sure that your kids are going to take care of you or something. Or you might decide to pick a company that is gonna make a retirement fund for you or you can pick a company that does investment for retirement so they can actually grow your re retirement money it's like it's your money so you are the one who's gonna be managing it it can go right or it can go wrong you might end up with a very bad situation in the future or you might end up having a lot of money in the future but at the end what the american society dictates is that it's your money is your responsibility and it's also your right to decide what to do with it. In Europe, it works differently because they don't want people doing stupid and then becoming homeless when they're 70. So pretty much the government takes that part to make sure of taking care of you. That, I think, is going to keep working very fine, especially in countries like the Czech Republic where people have kids, so the pyramid is normal. If we move to Spain, then we have issues because nobody wants to have kids. You know, they're 30 years old, they're not married, they don't have kids. They're like, I'm going to have them when I'm 38. And it's like... Once you have the pyramid like this, the government system doesn't really work. So you're actually paying a lot of money towards your retirement that is actually going to the old people of nowadays. And there's not young people to pay for your retirement. 
that's what scares me because in the American way is as I said before it's your money and you do with it what you please and if you are economically smart that's the best option if you're not economically smart that's the worst option so in my personal opinion I would much rather try to make people economically smart and have economy classes in school so I guess those are the main differences um Europe is much more of a socialized state. You have higher taxes, you have lower salaries, and you have lower economical opportunities of growth, meaning you put your own business and you might never make it. But at the same time, you are going to have public health, you are going to have a retirement, you are going to have very good public transportation, you're going to have all those things that you don't have to worry too much about. In US, you have complete economical freedom and responsibility that means all the money is yours the government is not going to take much out of it so you have to make sure you do smart for example if you want to send your kids to college it's not like, <coughs> college is so outrageously expensive well it is and it is not because at the same time you can take and pay for a college fund for your kids the moment they're like five years old you're like i want to put these kids in college so i start saving money and i just save literally 35 dollars a month until they're 20 until they're 18 35 dollars a month and they they can go to any college in their state completely for free. Even the books are included. So there are systems. It's not like it's insane and suddenly you need to go to college and it's $200,000. And as well, think the same that I said at the beginning about your own business. In the U.S., you can work without a college degree and actually live fine. You can be a police officer or a fireman and have a nice house and a three kids and have a... RV to go on vacation on the weekend and have a lake view and have you know all those things without needing the college degree so while in Europe it's kind of necessary to almost like survive to have that college degree not necessarily in America so in Europe is not for free we're all paying for it it's coming out of our pockets so it's nicer yeah because if I'm a parent that don't give a heck about my kids and I have three of them and I'm like huh, I don't care about your life at least in Europe those kids know that they're going to be able to go to the university if they want so that was it guys I'm so sorry if I infuriate some of you I know this video is going to be oh I don't even know why I did it but don't worry next week a very fun video is coming your way it's about Czech traditions and what are good manners here in the Czech Republic that are not good manners in my country and that's gonna be very fun to do to film and to watch and I hope this was not too painful for you guys I also invite you to follow me on my Instagram I'm posting there all the time about my life I just moved to a new house that you can see in the background and I even have one entire like story about the house and a house tour and everything so if you want to check that out go there check it out and now i need to stop this video because i need to edit this and post it because today is monday and it's coming up tomorrow and that was it thank you so much for watching and have a great day bye